Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Wasteland 3. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that you chose to join me today, as uh, I am a little bit turned around from where we were last episode, but we are, I think, in the marketplace. Look at that, the, the game doesn't make the terrible sound that it does on the map screen. The Market Square is the name of this thing. Let's have a chat with this Marshal Deputy. You the Rangers? Sheriff Daisy's looking for you over at the Marshal Station. Gotcha. I was thinking off camera while I was, uh, you know, musing about playing this game again because that's that's how you do off camera when you're not playing. You're musing about playing the games. Uh, I was musing that I might have leveled up over here. I did not. Oh, with Josh, I mean, uh, which is a shame because of course we want to get that uh, level five lock picking and see what is inside that locker uh, that we missed before. But uh, well, let's find out. Welcome to Mary Milk Teeth's Morning After Mart. If you did some things last night that you wish you hadn't. I got you covered. I can clean you up, sober you up, cure your ills, and get you ready to face the new day. Or maybe you got banged up in the Dorsey raid. I can help with that, too. What do you need? Merry Milk Teeth. A lot of alliteration there, but only if you count alliteration as not counting the, the hyphenated words. I'm not sure that works like that. I think that's what she was going for, but what's your story? Just a simple humanitarian who saw a niche that needed filling. Now, are you buying or are you talking? Talking. I'm definitely talking. Uh, what do you have for sale? Remedies for regret, children. Headache pills, hair of the dog, pills for the pox, pills for the pain, and first aid kits for those of you who might have started something you couldn't finish. All guaranteed to fill you with pep and put a spring in your step. What can I get you? Interesting that she doesn't actually sell contraception pills. Here you go, children. Salvation is at hand. When she says, oh, it's all sorts of pills, and then proceeds to to list all the pills that are not the pills. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, uh, we have oh, very little money. Our barter bonus is... Well, how does that work? Anyway, I'm selling, I'm selling that. I'm selling junk. We don't have any. You cannot afford this item. That's the wrong kind of pop-up. It's mostly, I don't have junk to sell. Uh, which is an interesting uh, bug, really. Um, she, what does she sell? Uh, it, it is indeed a bunch of pills. Casa Regretti, over here. Uh, it's the first time we see that, I think. It tastes as good as it smells. Yeah, but what does it do? I was trying to, to uh, scan it over, or not scan, skim it is the word, but it doesn't matter. We are going to use it if we find it, not if we buy it. Did you see the Dorsey? Is it true? The Dorseys are holed up in the Garden of the Gods? They blow up the statue? Oh, almost blew up the statue. That Colorado, uh, Colorado citizen. Col Col Colorado citizen said. Uh, but she's stuck now. I hear the Dorseys took hundred families hostages. About time the rich folks suffered with the rest of us. <laughs> the bodies of fallen marshals and citizens have been arranged to pick up a... Or for pickup and a proper burial. And we have the Patriarch's statue over here. Marshal deputy. Just a bunch of marshal deputies. Jimmy Bob. Oh, right. Snapping Jimmy Bob. Oh, so we were circled back around. Of course we did. Good. That's good, because I, I also remembered not exploring everything over here. Uh, let's find out why this is closed then, even though even though we have been in there. Sorry, no admittance. Museum's closed. The Saul Buchan Buchanan Colorado Heritage Museum seems closed for business. Yeah, uh, except the back entrance. It's kind of an interesting thing that you can go in there. Why would they make it like that? What exactly are they trying to tell you by it being closed for business? And you still being able to, to go in there. We got a container over here. Can I open it? I can. Just a little toy car and a little bit of money. Theodoric Curie. Curie, that's the French surname there. Uh, probably a reference to uh, Madame Curie, I would think. Or, and her husband, it's I don't know. to hold. I don't remember the name of her husband, though. So. Um, what's. Hi? Ah, hello there. The name's Theodoric Curie. Theo for friends. I need to work on these gate hydraulics. 
But I always have time to answer some questions, if you're here to learn about our wall. The wall? Tell us about the Colorado Springs wall. It's simply your standard concrete barrier with Tesla-styled electrical deterrence. Not an absolute marvel of what could be done, but sufficient for the task of keeping out enemies. If we had oil to power the generators, you'd see the glorious effect of thousands of volts of electricity arcing across it, deterring would-be attackers from approaching. Such a pity. <laughs> it's kind of funny, because this is such an impractical way of deterring um, uh, would-be attackers from approaching. You'd better just burn the oil <laughs> instead of, you know, using the generators to power electricity, because... You know, fire also does the thing that the arcing electrical things also do. And uh, probably is a more efficient uh, way of using the oil than using it to generate extremes amount of vol uh, voltage. Uh, actually, voltage isn't generate. No. How does that go? Thousands of volts of electricity. Yes, but the current is what's generated. Is that how it works? I'm not sure. Who are you? I am the humble son of scientists. My mother and father were on a mission to pursue the possibility of cold fusion. Imagine, nuclear reactions at room temperatures making it safe for everyone. Sadly, they are gone, and my efforts to follow their work has been stymied by immediate dangers. Perhaps one day, I'll have the time to devote to such a monumental achievement again. I think your stymying here comes from you just not knowing what cold fusion is. It is not a room temperatures. Cold fusion, it is not a room tem temperatures, though. So the reason why, the cold fusion is an interesting thing, because it, it's a very 70s style of, of, well, not science fiction. It is, science, well, it's not science, I don't think, it, no, it is science fiction. We don't, like, we haven't proved that it's possible, uh, like, physically possible. Even, like, because we, science works like that. You prove that it's possible, and then 50 years later, you actually manage to achieve it and work it and work with it. And then 50 years later, then, um, you get to actually have a machine that people can use. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you, you usually prove things before they, they, are, they are simulated in the laboratory. Uh, but science, uh, cold fusion, I don't think it is uh, possible. Or, rather, it hasn't been proven that it's possible. Or at least it hasn't... It's, anyway, the point is, cold fusion, the way fusion works, um, is that... When you fuse two, I'm simplifying this because I don't remember, and there's there's a variety of YouTube videos that you can go and look up. So I'm, this is a TLDR, all things considered. So the the the, the normal nuclear fusion uh, that I believe is what happens in the sun. Yeah, I think it is what happens in the sun. I I, I get them. there's two types of nuclear. Uh, reaction which is the fusion and the fission and fission is the splitting of the atom and that's how you have the nuclear weapons and also how you have nuclear generators it's just you balance things differently so you don't have a runaway nuclear reaction in nuclear generators so that they can you know work properly and not blow any everything up um that's that's the gist of it the, for nuclear fission but nuclear fusion is only possible in the sun and it generates so what happens is when you merge two atoms together they release an enormous amount of uh, uh, amount of uh, energy uh, for reasons, in their like technical reasons, phys physics reasons. Um, so there there was a theory uh, back in I think this would be most likely in the fifties uh, or maybe later even since cold fusion is is more of in the sixties and seventies like as a, a sort of staple of science fiction, but. Um, and for a while, it was like the hope for a future without oil was that, and uh, without energy worries was that we're going to be able to do cold fusion. Because the thing is, you you merge atoms together and just create so much energy. But the problem with the cold, the 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 the, the energy is that th that energy is also heat, um, and that's how the sun. That's why the sun is hot. Um, but uh, or to oversimplify things anyway. Uh, but the point the the point of it was that we could make a fusion that didn't generate that heat. Um, and, and uh, would, would be controllable, because that's the problem. It is not controllable. Um, the heat is not. So instead of, like, all of a sudden having a, a reaction that overheats immediately and, and just burns everything up, you could control the fusion rate, and it would be colder, not... You know, I mean, less hot is not necessarily cold. It is not a room temperature, but I might be wrong on this. Uh, 
there's probably a very testing video about this or a Vsauce or Physics Girl, PBS, what, what's that channel name? PBS Studios, I think? Yeah, it's many, many, three blue, one brown, or the other way around, I think, uh, three brown, one blue? I don't remember. So many YouTube channels about physics. I, I'm not, the, yeah, just anyway. Believe me, I understand. Thank you for stopping by, and good luck out there. But the... Back to the, the wall. Back to the wall, yeah. The, um, the reason why I know this, or the reason why I picked on this, is because uh, in, in StarCraft, it's a really cool cutscene, but in StarCraft, the original one, there's a cutscene when they have, they, they open a, a case and there's like cold fusion in there. Um, uh, it's supposed to be like a cold fusion reaction. Somebody says, thank God for cold fusion, and that's because it's all full of ice. Uh, and uh, they take a beer out of it, and it's like it's like it's the refrigerator. The, the generator is the refrigerator, which I believe might be a misunderstanding even further than the room temperature. Um, but yeah, I might be wrong on the room temperature thing. I yeah. But anyway, that's uh, that's the thing. That's the thing there. It's very cold anyway, so room temperature would be cold <laughs> here uh, because room temperature is probably freezing. No time. Dr. Parker. Oh my god, that guy's bleeding. Uh, can I help him out? Badly bleeding man. This man is sitting clenched teeth in a puddle of his own blood and a hand pressed to his belly. Intestines bulge from between the slats of his fingers. That's bad, because the sepsis is... Oh my god. It's, the bleeding out is going to be the least of your troubles. He will not last much longer without assistance. You need a, a suture kit to help him. It isn't... That but Come bad, on, is it? Pull through. Just, I hope just I just saved. Am I right? I don't think I have a you suture see. kit. The other guy. Just the other guy. Too many patients. A linebacker in a lab coat. This doctor is clearly weary, but works feverishly to bandage the body or the bloody head of an unconscious young woman. Hey, Doc. Quan, hope you won't take offense, but I've got no time for niceties. Dying people take precedence. Understood, brother. Can we, uh... Can you... Uh, no. Can we do anything to help? He gestures towards the injured men lying nearby. They're in bad shape, and I don't have the time or tools to save them. Uh... You can count on us. What can we do? His shoulders sag with relief. Thank you. The things I need most are a suture kit, an injury kit, and a medic pack. Got that? These folks are literally dying on us, so don't fuck around. We're on it. We'll talk more when you come back. Hopefully you... D d d yeah. Um, no, we do come back. Oh. Usable items, most likely. Let's see. Medic... Uh, he's, that's a medic pack. Searcher kit is not a thing. So medic pack is that. Injury kit is another. I wonder if I have all the things. What now? Uh, we have a few questions. Uh, I don't know. Let's go with that. Long as you don't mind if I keep working while we talk. Who are you? Name's Parker. Plenty of doctors in Colorado Springs. I'm one of them. Well, that doc's underselling himself as always. Ask anyone. They'll tell you. Parker's the best in town. Used to be the Patriarch's personal doctor. That would be a heck of a recommendation. If you were looking for a babysitter. Just wish I had enough medicine to keep this clinic going. Running out of everything. How do you know... How do you and Quan uh, know each other? We used to beat each other up when we were boys. You get to know somebody pretty well when you fight them a few hundred times. That was always Arapaho kids versus townie kids. Parker was the only Arapaho who put up a good fight. Till I grew up and hit the books. Figured I couldn't make a career of beating people senseless. Quan found a way to do it, though. What the hell happened to you, anyway? Dorsey attack. Maybe you heard about it. Mm. I don't know if he's being snarky about it. What did you need from us again? A suture kit, a medical pack, and an injury kit. Then uh. use them to fix up the other patients. Then use... I need to use them. Okay, so the suture kit is the problem. Let's talk about something else. Sure. Any chance you'd be interested in working for us? We could use a good doctor about, uh, at our headquarters. There are people dying right here, right now, and you're trying to get me to leave? What the hell are you thinking? 
Eh, it's fine. Uh, can you patch us up? Now I can. Sure. I don't know what he means now by that. Uh, 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 that, sure. Okay. You're good. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. So, um... I... So, I, I think I don't have the suture kit, but I might have the rest of the stuff. This young woman is unconscious. Her head is wrapped in bloody gauze. Okay. Oh. Nearly unconscious woman. This woman is almost unconscious. Her body is a nightmare of bruises and welts, but at least she is breathing. The damage is severe, but treatable with basic tools. You could use one of your medic packs to save her life. They wouldn't stop. Why wouldn't they stop? It hurts. Please. I don't know if how I, how I can do that. Because, you know. They wouldn't stop. Why wouldn't they In Fallout 1, you can right-click and apply items to anything in the world. It's one of the many reasons why Fallout 1 is amazing. And Fallout 2 as well. Um, but, um... It's a medic pack right there. But in this game, thing, rules are different. And also, you can't read the descriptions of literally everything in the world as well. Which is also one of the many reasons why Fallout 1 and 2 is, are, are so amazing. That every, more games should have that, but there it is. It's actually relatively easy. Where? What's going on? Did you patch me up? A little. It still hurts, but way less than it did. Thank you. Okay. This man doesn't appear to be in much pain, but he's intensely focused on his leg. White bone shears. Yes, uh, that's shears. Right? Not shares? Cheers. Through the skin. He's clearly broken it in several places. This may end poorly for him. You could use one of your injury kits to save Jumped his... out of a building to escape the Dorseys. Didn't count on the ground stopping me. Yeah. Um, it's uh, to save his life. An injury kit to save his life. So I have that. Is that the one that... Almost got everything the doc asked for. That's true, Kwan. Almost. Lucky crit. Nice. My leg! You said it! Ugh, still hurts like a bitch, but maybe I'll actually walk again. I don't think that quite works like that. If you break your bone in multiple places, and if it shatters, I think, it doesn't It doesn't work like that, does it? I'm, not, I'm for... We'll bring it back to Parker along with the rest of the supplies. Maybe that is what I need. The thing that I... Because this was me equipping things, and that Quan was talking every time... Well, the second time I equipped something, and the... Fr yeah. Uh, this is a med hypo. So I don't think it is what I need, but let's find out. So this man is bleeding. You need a suture kit. Specifically a suture kit. It is pretty bad. But I might be able to buy it somewhere. I hope I am. The other guy. Yeah, okay. So, I can't... Oh, there's a what trader. Now? Hi. Uh, there's a trader elsewhere. Good luck. Over here. Make sure you take care of that bike when you get to it. That rust trap? Why? Because this was Jimmy Longhall's first car. When it gave up the ghost in the plains, he salvaged what he could. Turned it into this monster you see before you. All because he couldn't bear to be separated from his machine. That's dedication for you. Also to get out of the planes. You all forgot that part. Oh, that's Jimmy Long Hall over there. I think I recognize his voice. He's the Patriarch's voice actor, I think. Potentially not. Uh, hi. Even in his old age, this man is impressive. Broad-shouldered and thick naked. He wears his hair in thick white braids. Which are, as we well know, the best hairstyle. Braids. Forever. Hey, Jimmy. Glad to see you're okay. Dorsey's didn't get this far? Nah. They didn't bother with us. They were after folks wearing badges like yours. I would have shot those Dorsey's dead if they'd walked in my garage. Haven't seen your friends before. If you folks are looking for help with your vehicle, you've come to the right place. What is this place? This is the Colorado Springs Arapaho Station. 
We got stations all over Colorado, mostly for fixing and supplying our own fleet. But we fix vehicles and sell parts to anybody. I'm the manager, Jimmy Longhall. That's my crew over there. You need any repairs or alterations to your ride, they're the ones who will put it all together. Best crew in the business. He looks like he also repaired people. Yeah? Oh, that's Doc Parker. He needed a place to set up his clinic, and we had the space, so good thing, too. Those Dorseys hurt a lot of people with that little raid of theirs. We brought as many as we could in here, and Doc's been patching them up as fast as he can. Only got two hands, though. And no suture kits. Is Parker a good doctor? The best in Colorado Springs, no lie. He was the Patriarch's personal physician for a while. Took care of all the hoity-toits in Broadmoor Heights, too. Kind of pissed us off at the time, actually. Nice Arapaho boy taking care of the hemorrhoids of the hundred families and turning his back on his own people. Came home in the end, though. Remembered who he was and set up his clinic here. Been serving the working people of Colorado Springs ever since. I wonder how people... Hemorrhoids are such a... Like, that's such a... Scientific... Like a, a specific medical term uh, for a thing that many people have and many people have had for centuries without the term. So I wonder how that the term has evolved. Not necessarily how has it, it has evolved in the sense that like it doesn't come from another word that me meant the same thing, but it's similar or something. Like other terms, like knife, for example, comes from the word knif, um, for a Nordic, uh, for, I think from the Danish, maybe? I don't, I'm not sure. Anyway, the point is, not in that sense, but more as in what people has call, have called it over the centuries and maybe in different languages and all that, because... <laughs> I, it makes sense in English, but it's one of those words that um, maybe the post-apocalypse would change. I'm just saying. Maybe you wouldn't know very much about your butt to be able to tell, Oh, yes, you see my ass? It's got a thing called hemorrhoid. And, uh, yeah, it's a thing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, can you tell us about your, um, your employees? Co-workers, not employees. I only give the orders because I take the orders. Get me? Mm-hmm. Anyway, Fastback's the old one. Been with the station almost as long as I have. Ranch, the tall fella, thinks he's a heartbreaker, but he's the most sentimental sap you'll ever meet. And Pacer's our newest recruit. Don't mess with her. She's ten pounds of attitude in a five-pound bag. Nice. Uh, uh, I should say <clears throat> before, I, I didn't make it clear, everybody has hemorrhoids. It's them misbehaving that is a problem not necessarily it's just a part of the body basically uh but interesting that he mentions heartbreaker am i wrong in saying that a heartbreaker is just somebody who's really good looking or attractive anyway doesn't not necessarily you need, don't need to be conventionally attractive in the sense of outward looks you can just be a heartbreaker by being just a bang up person i suppose in this you know i'm just talking about the colloquial term that if you say oh that's a heartbreaker right there that's is that just because they are good looking, or because uh, mm, that's not really a term in Portuguese? So I didn't grow up hearing that. Uh, and, uh, of course, I can analyze it in the. I can analyze it in the literal term, which is somebody who breaks arts, hearts, not arts. You don't don't break the arts, break the hearts, destroy them in your fist. But no, uh, so you can anal analyze it from a literal sense. But I don't think that's meant to be like that, to be analyzed like that. Although he kind of sounds like that's what he's doing. That's why I'm, I'm wondering if that is. Anyway, so are you all uh, at Apaho here? At the moment, yeah. I get Driving and wrenching has kind of become the Arapaho brand. We pride ourselves on being the best mechanics and couriers in the West. I kind of skipped his line a little bit. Uh, what can you tell us about the Arapaho? Well, except for those of us who run the stations, we mostly live on the road. The people of the convoy, some folks call us. And we've turned that way of life into a business. Arapaho service stations, Iron Thunder logistics, Arapaho caravan protection, and so on. While other folks were eating each other in the suburbs or fighting over mansions in Broadmoor Heights, we kept to the wildlands and didn't come back until civilization had reestablished itself. 
kind of funny that they would be fighting over mansions. You'd be fighting over their loot, but the mansions themselves? That's interesting. Honestly, if I had to live in a world like this, I would just... I'd fight over a machine that cuts logs so I could make a, a house for me and, and, my, my, and my fellows just out in the wilderness away from people with guns, basically. Because, yeah, it's... yeah. Living in a place that has loot on on top of just being enormous and that hard to maintain, because you know cement is a pain in the butt. Uh, wood is a lot easier to maintain, even though it doesn't last as long. Well, actually, I say it doesn't last as long. Uh, cement doesn't last very long. It's like I don't know if new the new forms of cement. I'm talking about concrete. Actually, cement is a different term. Uh, the new forms of concrete have different life t uh, time expectancies, but I, I think ours like it's got like. 100 years, 150 years, and then after that it's not stable, and you need to replace basically <laughs> everything that you made. I'm not sure about that, though. And when we came back, we came with services people needed. Transportation, protection, and repair. Been living well ever since. Do you hire outsiders? Sure we do, if they're good enough. Takes a lot of skills to be better than an Arapaho, though. I think I might be able to do something, because uh, I'm good at repairs. What do you sell? Anything for your vehicle. Yeah, I, Have a look. Am I good at repairs? Might be mistaken. Anything! And he sells four things, including a vehicle upgrade, a weapon, a rhino cannon, and a trucker horn. 10-4, good buddy. What's your 20? You got another career plan. I yeah. give it another three months before Pesa leaves you in the dust. And so what if she does? It just means I gotta work harder. Ain't no shame in that. I'm gonna remind you that you said that. That spacer over there. She's a she's not particularly tiny. She he made it seem like she was really tiny, but uh, oh no, maybe she is. Wait a minute, this game does have different body builds, but she doesn't look particularly I tiny. Call, him? call who? Oh, just this woman he's been in love with forever now. They met in the bazaar, and she saved him from getting into trouble. But now he's too scared to do anything about it. Whoa! Hey! <laughs> yeah, cuz uh they even have a uh, they even have small people in this game. The the they call it stocky. I know, is it stocky? Compact, I believe is the the term. And uh it's just a body type rather than height thing. It's an actual body type. Uh so you can be tall and and uh in short even for a small person. Speaking of small people, well not small people. Short pe short to the ground anyway. Uh, this badly bleeding man is going to have to continue badly bleeding for a while because I don't have suture kits. And I'm pretty sure he's not going to bleed out anytime soon. And I'm not going to be able to buy anything for the moment. So let's hope that I can do something about that in the next episode. For right now, I'm Colonel RPG, and this has been Wasteland 3. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.